Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome, welcome to our family, welcome to our community. If you're not subscribed already, make sure you go ahead and do so. On this channel, I like to talk a lot about communication strategies for parents, emotional management, stress management, social emotional learning tools, and so much more. So if any of those topics sound interesting to you, I really urge you to check out some of my other videos. There's a lot of good ones out there. So as you can see by the title of this video, today we're going to be talking about how we can become masters of our emotions. Before we get into how, I want to talk about the why. Why do we need to feel in control? Why do we need to have that power over ourselves and be able to master our own emotions? I want to start off by talking about how emotions are unifying. It's a part of the human existence. So sometimes the way we can connect as humans in our relationships, etc., is by identifying with emotions like sadness, fear, anger, frustration, overwhelm. I mean, now is is such an important time and so relevant for this topic because we're all experiencing something very similar. And so a lot of these emotions that are coming about are uniting us. They're creating more groups, more movements. So it's really important to have that acknowledgement that yes, they can be uniting and they can be a good thing. Emotions also govern our sense of well-being. So they are a product of our experiences. And more importantly, they're a product of how we perceive those experiences. I want to talk about that a little more because in most situations, especially now as a society, the reason we feel a certain way about a certain situation is because of the way that we perceive it. We overthink, we overanalyze, we overdo. We're constantly building such high importance onto a specific thing or person or situation and we let it control us. But instead, if we looked at a situation as more neutral, we wouldn't have to build up so much fear and so much anxiousness and so much hatred over something. It's because of our perception and even more so our perspective that allows us to feel these feelings. I talked about this concept in another video and I'm gonna leave that linked up there. But basically what happens is when we're in a situation we interpret or perceive that situation. And because of that thought or that label that we put on it, it causes our body to have certain physiological reactions such as the sweat in our palms or you know, the, our heart beating faster or some other physiological thing that's happening in our bodies. That gets interpreted again and an emotion is born. So really when we think about the process that's involved, there are so many steps along the way to having that emotion be born. And ultimately, we can control that ending aspect if we're not putting that label on it. So the moment we change that interpretation or that label is the moment that we gain control. So the way that we can cultivate those positive emotions is by focusing on them. The more we focus, the more we create. So if we're focusing on aspects of our life that include gratitude, love, compassion, confidence, flexibility, these are the things that we can cultivate more of. And in that way, if we're focusing on those aspects of our life, we're shifting our perception. The more we let go of those negative labels, the more we gain control. Another reason why we need to do this is because it cultivates healthy relationships. And at the end of the day, that's what we want to see. That's what we want to see as parents. And we want to see cultivated in our children as well, those healthy relationships. So the, the more that you're thinking in this perspective and in this mindset, the more that those kind of people with similar mindsets come into your life. And the easier it becomes to allow your kids to cultivate this as well. So when we're demonstrating appropriate responses to certain situations, instead of flipping our lid or creating so much fear or sadness even, the more we nurture our relationships in the right way. And this is something that affected me for a really long time. I became so, especially with anger, I became so worked up over the smallest things that I would just explode over something so small. And the reason behind that was partially because when something bothered me, when something upset me, I wouldn't acknowledge it to myself or the person that actually hurt me. And so I'd keep it bottled up. I'd keep it inside 
and then I would let it build and build and build until the moment I just couldn't hold it anymore. And then I just let it all out. And so to the person that was there in this moment, they would not only be confused, but they would be hurt. They would think it's something to do with them. And they would think all of these things. And if I could have stopped that, I would have been in a different situation with them. Part of the reason I did this was partially because of the way I was raised. You know, emotions were not something that we talked about in my family. My mom was never one to express her grievances unless they had to do with us, something that was wrong on our end. And, you know, she never talked about when she was sad or even upset or overwhelmed. The only emotions I really saw out of her was anger. That's about it. And so it really matters the way we are not only talking to ourselves internally, but how we're portraying our emotions in our relationships. So now that we talked about the why, I want to talk about the how. What are the things that we can do to become masters over our emotions? What are the things that we can do day by day that help us get on a path towards being in control, towards being empowered? And the first thing that we need to do is identify how we feel. And I've talked about this concept over and over and over again, but it really is the most important thing. As soon as I allowed myself to do this one thing, I saw so much improvement. When we ask those questions, those guided questions, like, how am I feeling? What am I feeling? Am I really feeling this emotion? Or is it something else? Is it my past being brought up? Is it the thought about the future? Asking yourself these questions that allow you to investigate even further. Because that's one thing, emotions are there because they are trying to tell us something. And if we're silent enough, if we listen closely, we'll know. Next thing is to acknowledge and appreciate our emotions because they're there for a reason. They're there to tell us something. So if we can acknowledge and accept it, like, wow, I'm feeling really sad today, instead of denying it or running away from it. I think we live in a society and even a culture that often goes more towards distractions like social media or you know playing a game on our phone, just phones in general. We tend to do anything else but really feel in that discomfort. And the moment that we allow ourselves to be in this discomfort and not be uncomfortable by this discomfort is the moment we can actually challenge ourselves and grow. We need to be put in uncomfortable situations in order to move forward, to take us to this next step. You know, if we want to adapt and learn about ourselves, we need to sit with that uncomfortable feeling. And, you know, that's probably one of the hardest things to do, be uncomfortable. But it's about taking small steps every day to be more comfortable with that discomfort. For me, one of the biggest things that made me uncomfortable was being in front of an audience, even talking in general. For years, I struggled with a social anxiety. And to be sitting here in front of this virtual audience now is something I never thought I would be able to do. And it didn't happen overnight. You know, it was steps that I took purposefully to be in uncomfortable situations. Every opportunity that, you know, put me in this discomforting situation, I took. I had to. I had to take it because I knew it would get me to the next phase, the next step. And it's all about taking steps, baby steps along the way to get you to wherever it is that want you to be. Because ultimately it's us that stops us from moving forward. It's no one else. You know, you have control. You just have to find it. And it takes work. That I can tell you, it does take work, but you can get there. A part of that acknowledgement is also accepting that these emotions are what make you you. They're a part of you. And so accepting them is also about accepting yourself. You know, if these things are based on your experiences and your perceptions, they are you. And part of, you know, growing with these and having more control over them is accepting the fact that, yeah, they make me who I am. Another thing we can do is to get curious about them. Get curious about the message that these emotions are trying to tell you. Are they trying to get you to solve a problem? 
Maybe it's a problem based on your past or a problem that you think might happen in the future. We have to ask ourselves, why am I feeling this way? What happened that is making me feel this way? Why am I really feeling this? And then solve the challenge. As you ask yourself these questions, you're gonna notice that more and more things are coming up. So we have to do a little bit of investigation. And that's where the curiosity aspect, like the cultivating those good aspects is about being more curious, trying to learn more about yourself. Another thing is that we have to get confident and get certain. So part of gaining more control over how you perceive things and how you feel is about being confident that, you know, maybe you were feeling this way before and you successfully overcame it. So if we can think back to that time when we successfully overcame this thought or this obstacle in our lives and what we did to overcome it, we can, you know, boost our confidence a little bit. Maybe I can try that again, or maybe I can take a different route, but I know I did this before, so I can do it again. And the way we get certain is when we rehearse handling situations. So I'm going to tell you a funny story and you're probably going to think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you it works. So over this past year, I think I've done it, especially with starting up my business, also dealing with the anxiety, the social anxiety, some family stuff that was going on. There was a lot that changed over this year, not to mention COVID. You know, like I was, wasn't even putting that into perspective, but that as well, there was just a lot going on for me. And so what I started doing, I would start rehearsing situations before they happen. Whether that be visualizing what was going to happen and then the actions that I would take to get there or work through them, or if it was me physically walking myself through the situation out loud. So what was I gonna say? What was I, what was the monologue that I was going to give? And that's how I would get through the situation. So I would physically practice the situation before it was going to happen. And once the situation happened, I felt like I already did this before. And it boosted my confidence in a way. Maybe it's just me, but I do know that visualizing has worked for many people. And I know on a side note that self-talk is something that is really powerful, not only for our internal communication, but also our external communication. So that self-talk is something that really helped me walk myself through and it's really something that gave me my confidence back so try it out you know do you but it worked for me and so i just wanted to put that out there but lastly we have to get excited about being the master we have to get excited about getting our control back and taking action on it that's the biggest thing we can do when we're stuck or when we're feeling discomfort is to take action, take the first step, take a leap, whether you know the outcome or not. That is the first thing that we have to do. Before I end today's video, I just want to quickly announce that Spots My One to One are opening up. So if you'd like to schedule that free 45 minute consult, I'm gonna leave the link down below. And if you have any questions on it or you're trying to know who this consult is for, all the information is available on my website. This is for those who are struggling with any aspect that I talk about on my channel. So whether that's confidence, communication, control, connection, those are the main areas that we work on together. So just to recap what we talked about in today's video, we talked about why mastering our emotions is so important, why we need control, and how as a parent it can set us up for success. We also talked about how. We talked about the how to get to that mastery level and the six steps we need to take in order to get there. So if you wanna know more, just sign up, it's free and you'll gain tons of value out of it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys found this useful as always and I'll see you next time.